Calling a scope revolutionary or groundbreaking is often just marketing hyperbole, but it wouldn't be a stretch to use those terms for the Konos EL30, because it is one of the first commercially available rifle scopes with a changeable LCD reticle, and we're going to take a look at it in greater detail on this episode of Moondog Industries. Let's start by taking a look at what you get in the box. But rather than doing a typical unboxing where I'm fumbling with the contents, let me just show you what's in the box. So there you go. All right, this is the Konos Pro EL30. This is a 6 to 24 by 50 scope. And it is, well, it's, as you can see, it's a little bit bigger than uh, 15 inches. So it's practically um, 16 inches long. So it barely fits the screen here. So it is a good sized scope for a 6 to 24. And it comes with these nice see-through scope uh, lens covers here from Konos. Now let's take a closer look at this scope in detail. It seems nicely constructed. The thing that's, that of course it first comes to four is this very large and unusual looking housing for what usually has all of the uh, turret mechanism in here and also a complete lack of an illumina illumination or parallax knob that is usually on the left side of uh, these illuminated scopes. Um, well, I should say usually. Oftentimes also they, they would be on the IP section, which this one is. Unusually, there are two rings here. One would usually be your magnification, but They've put the parallax wheel back here instead of on the side, so that is also unusual about this particular scope. All right, so that, let's just check out these turrets here. Nicely loud. Positive, but, not, but a little soft. I mean, I can definitely feel, feel the clicks. And they are easily loud, and they are locking. So you push to lock, pull to unlock, and the windage. Oh, this is definitely this feels very different. A lot more tension, and you can hear there's a difference in the sound. Far less, far less tactile feedback on this. It's it's certainly loud enough. So each click is one eighth of an MOA. So that is uh, a little a little finer than your typical quarter MOA per click scope. It's still unusual. Here you can hear the difference. And there is a significant difference. There's almost no tension, or just a typical amount. Even I would even say light tension on. The clicks here, but this one, yeah, definitely stiffer. All right, so our parallax wheel, as I had mentioned, is unusually over here. It goes from zero all the way down to 10 yards. And okay, this is stiff, but not too difficult. A little bit of maybe a little bit of grit right there, but. Not too bad. And it has a little nub there. Wouldn't quite call it a fin, but that'll make it easier for you to turn this and also get a tactile reference as to how much you've turned the parallax focus. And our magnification wheel, smooth. You can hear a little bit of rubbing, but no grit on this at all. And it goes from 6 to 24 in a 90 degree or 180 degree turn. And uh, your reference magnification, um, it'd be nice if they would have put a dot or something on there or changed the color, but 16 is where all of the subtensions are, are um, set to. And this big honking button is the illumination button. Now, this is common to Konos's. Uh, scope line, hunting scope line, their illumination button is nice and big like that, and it is a rubberized button there. 
a little bit of sound, but not too too loud. And we'll take a look at the, the reticle outside in a bit, but this is the what makes it unusual. It's got an on and off button and a mode button, and this is these are your controls for the reticle. And this is really what sets this particular scope apart and really makes it revolutionary. And let's just listen and feel this ocular focus. And it's a little bit of rubberized, so that's nice. Smooth a little bit of grit at the very end, but smooth. All right, so there you go. Well, we're going to test it out, bring it outdoors, and see how well this works. Let's start with some long-range imaging with the peak of Mount Davidson approximately 1,300 yards away. And we have the scope set at its lowest power of 6. This is to give us our best image quality. And note the image inside of the glass versus outside of the glass to note any changes in terms of hue, saturation, contrast, and brightness. As we bring the scope up to its highest power of 24, we're introducing more faults into the image. First, let me adjust the exposure on the camera because it looks a little blown out. There we go, much better detail. Now, we can see the trail marker sign. It's poking up above the bushes on the right side, right where the reticle thickens up in the duplex. And this is a, about a 36 inch tall sign on an eight foot pole, which is a pretty good proxy for what a steel target looks like at this distance. All right, let's take a look at this illumination on the scope. I'm gonna turn it on by pressing the button on the top. And this is on an overcast day. It's actually raining right now. So uh, it's pretty, it's relatively low light, but again, it's not daylight bright and not overcast daylight bright, really. It really hasn't helped to differentiate the reticle from this very cluttered background. But um, it does have eight levels of brightness. We're going to uh, click it to move it up, or down, I should say, to one, and that's not visible to, any, to the naked eye, really, um, unless you're really IR sensitive, but you should be able to see it with uh, nods. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and back to eight. And that is its highest setting. And I'm gonna put my hand in front of the bell there. All right, let's head out to the rifle range to test out this scope. And if you've been enjoying this video so far, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon. It just takes a second and it's absolutely free. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe to this channel. But by doing that, you're letting the algorithm know that this is the content that you're interested in watching. And it's less likely to suggest the crap videos it usually recommends. So win-win. All right, we're starting with a scope at its lowest power of six, and we're going to bring it up to its maximum magnification of 24. And now that we're at 24, I can see that I haven't had to change the position of the camera, which means we haven't lost a significant amount of eye relief. All right, let me bring it back down to six, and we'll check out the range of adjustments. All right, let's first start with our elevation turret. I'm gonna crank this down to see how far down from center we can get it to. And there we go, we're, we're bottomed out there. I'm gonna bring it back up. And you know, I'm finding the housing, the, the, the lar enlarged housing for the reticle kind of gets in the way of turning this elevation turret. I just keep on banging my finger against it as I'm twisting it. And it's getting stiff, I, this is, this is topped out here, so let me bring this back down. Um, the reticle is, is definitely feeling a little, um, a lot more resistance uh, towards the end there. All right, and uh, yeah, this housing is really kind of annoying. Now the specs say that there is 56 MOA of adjustments, and that may just be an elevation, but let's find out. Let's let's turn this windage turret here, and oh, I forgot to unlock it. Okay, got to pull and unlock. There we go, and. Just turning that over to the right, and okay, that's that's as far as it goes. All right, let's bring this back, and just by eyeballing it, maybe it's about 56. We'll see. Let's turn it all the way to the left and see how far this goes. If it goes the equivalent distance from the center, no, that's that. That was it. Okay, so I would just by eyeballing it say that it doesn't quite have as much a range of adjustment on the windage. 
All right, let's do a box test, and I've zoomed in digitally to the image just so we can clearly see if we're turning back to zero. Full rotation on our elevation. Full rotation on our windage. Back to, oops, wrong direction, back to zero. On our elevation, and then back to zero on our windage. All right, so it passed the box test. And that icon on the top right corner is the low battery indicator because I forgot to turn off the illuminator and it's been on for months. Next we have a turret torture test invented by my buddy Cyclops Joe for his scope review channel where he calls it the nipple twister because we're going to be twisting and turning both of these turrets to and fro more than a typical person would in a given year. But we're going to see after twisting these turrets if it will in fact return back to its starting location after we get them back to zero. So we've got the elevation at zero. Now let's get our windage back to zero. And I think I'm one off. Let me just click that back. And yes, we're right back to where it started. First, let me take a still image from the video so that we're not dealing with the camera shaking every time that guy in the next bench is shooting his rifle with the annoying muzzle brake. The first thing to note, at 24 power, we are seeing some softening and distortion of the image and sharpness around the outer edges. Also, there is noticeable chromatic aberrations. That's that purple fringe along the edge of the white target, uh, with especially noticeable against the black backer. For a practical test, let's take a look at the paper target on the bottom left. You can make out the holes in the reactive sticker target in the center, and there are three additional 22 caliber holes on the paper, but I can only really make out one of them. Now let's take a look at the U.S. Air Force optical resolution chart on the right. With my naked eye, I can make out both horizontal and vertical lines down to element 2 in group negative 1. And in terms of overall image, there's a certain lack of contrast and an overall brownish tint. But let's be honest, the only reason you want the scope is because of the LCD reticle. So let's take a look at all 10 patterns that you can select from. You've got modern long range Christmas trees to traditional mill ranging reticles to simple circular aim points and traditional hunting duplexes. All right, so that is the Konos EL30. And before I get into my thoughts and insights after testing the scope, I'd like to remind you to hit that like button, the subscribe button, and the notification bell icons right now. It'll just take a second. Thanks for doing that. All right, so let's start with what I believe are the shortcomings of the scope. And I really couldn't show this well in the testing footage, but this scope has a very unforgiving eye box, uh, surprisingly unforgiving. Uh, the exit pupil is just really tiny. Uh, well, compared to other scopes in, in its price tier, I, I've only tested one other Kona scope, by the way, which is the Absolute, and it's a 40 power scope. But even at 40 power, that scope has a much more forgiving eye box than this does at 24. So I don't know why that is. I, I, I wonder if it's a side effect of the engineering that went into uh, putting an LCD reticle on the scope. Maybe that's the reason why it has an unforgiving eye box. Um, the other thing about that uh, LCD reticle is the other shortcoming is the illumination. I really, really didn't do anything for the reticle for me. And they could probably have just made this a non-illuminating uh, scope and it would have been fine. Um, but I suspect that it's just because of the nature of the beast. The LCD reticle just doesn't reflect the illumination as well as an etched reticle or a wire reticle. Perhaps that's what it is. But that is sort of the trade-off you have with having such a new technology for the for the reticle, which I think is super cool and really uh, could possibly be where we're going, especially with uh, computerized um, scopes that are that are being rolled out for the military that can change uh, your point of aim depending on the ballistic the ballistics the distance that you're you're inputting in. It'll adjust where the reticle is. So LCD reticles may be the way things are going. And I'm old enough to remember the first LCD watches and the first LCD monitors. And look how far we've come with that kind of technology. Uh, I have a smartwatch that I could practically watch television on. So yeah, um, maybe this is a Gen 1. It certainly is cool enough to have now. And um, perhaps it, you might, some of you may think it's a bit of a gimmick to be able to have a changing reticle, but uh, it does have some practical uses. I mean, if you are, let's say, going on a hunt and also do target shooting, what many 
shooters out there find that they have to do is buy two identical rifles and put two different scopes on them or at the very least they'll have to swap out the scope depending on what they're using it for because you know a, uh, a target uh, a target uh, competition scope um, really needs a different reticle than a hunting scope where you want a nice thick um, thick crosshairs for for snapshots and you're not doing a lot of adjustments so um, having those different kind of reticles and be able to change it uh, without having to change your scope and having to re-zero, remount and re-zero the scope on the rifle, that is a huge boon. And if you have some other um, reasons why you'd want a changing reticle, please leave me a comment. I'm sure there are other uses, some other utilities for it. Now, one caveat though, for those of you who are into ELR shooting, uh, these turrets aren't great for that. Uh, they just, um, well, for one, they aren't resettable. And they, the elevation especially is kind of hard to manipulate easily just because this big hump here kind of gets in the way. And, you know, when I was turning, I'd constantly be jamming my, my finger, my thumb up against this. So, yeah, they'd need to redesign this turret, really, if, they're, if this was a serious ELR scope. But, you know, that's just my opinion. Anyway, if you're interested in picking one up, um, they're not really available all that many places. But I'll include product links in my full written review at MoondogIndustries.com. So definitely check that out. And again, thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate it. You be safe out there. Moondog, out. Hey, I'd like to know what you thought of this video. Leave me a comment or chat with me on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, MeWe, Instagram, or Locals. And if you want to see all of my videos, go to MoondogIndustries.com.